so let us discuss this respiratory failure with the help of some cases okay i will discuss three to four cases and we will be able to understand it well better i guess so the case one is 55 year old male uh, known hypertensive presented with chest pain sweating dry cup breathlessness cold extremities and he has tachycardia blood pressure is 90 systolic he has raised jbp and has a cyanosis patient felt better in sitting position he was not comfort he was not comfortable in lying down position so as soon as you make the patient in sitting position get him in the sitting position patient felt better but he needs oxygen support his chest x ray is done and abg is showing ph 7.35 po2 of 60 and pco2 of 30 millimeters of mercury and bicarb is 20 what is the diagnosis can somebody come up with the diagnosis you can uh, write your answer in the chat box yes doctor doctor indumati has written rbf yeah so you can see the x-ray this is the x-ray where you see the homogeneous opacity is bilaterally presenting okay so this is a case of probably bilateral pneumonia and we can call it as ARDS as we know that the PO2s are less. On 60% FiO2, the PO2 is just 60. So if you may, if you calculate the ratio of PO2 to FiO2 ratio, it comes to around 100. So this is a severe category of ARDS where the PF ratio is less than 100. And we have to uh, have a ventilation strategy for patients with the severe ARDS. As we have seen in COVID pandemic, majority of the patients who presented with severe ARDS, they needed uh -huh. ventilatory support and they need long-term ventilation. Uh, and some patients even needed uh, extra pulmonary uh, uh, devices, extra corporeal devices also in the form of ECMO. So looking at the second case, uh, same case, you know, this patient has cardiogenic pulmonary edema. If you see the x-ray here, these are all homogeneous white opacities, okay? Uh, and these are bilateral in origin and we call it as batwing appearance also, okay? So in patients with the pulmonary edema, uh, that is also one cause of ARDS. But you know, uh, it has been removed. The acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema has been removed from the definition of ARDS as you know that uh, cardiogenic pulmonary edema can be treated with diuretics and ventilatory support, whereas ARDS of infective etiology of the lung uh, wouldn't get corrected with the diuretics. So then that's why we cannot call it as ARDS, but this is cardiogenic pulmonary edema because this patient is orthopnic. This patient is breathless. He, is cold, he has cold extremities, means the patient is in cardiogenic shock. Okay, and he has a raised GVP, all the more a reason to consider it as having cardiogenic shock and he has cyanosis. Somebody who is better in the sitting position, okay, uh, we should suspect cardiogenic pulmonary edema, whereas patients with ARDS may not uh, be improved with even with the sitting position or uh, with minimum oxygen support. So, so what is the, we call it as hypoxemic respiratory failure. This is type 1 respiratory failure where we see the abnormality in the pulmonary gas exchange. And as you know that the alveolar is filled with the fluid. So um, oxygen or air is coming inside the alveolar, but it is not getting exchanged with the uh, capillaries because the fluid is interfering with the exchange. So that's why these patients will have shunt. We call it as uh, VQ mismatch. And that is a cause of hypoxemia and will lead to uh, breathlessness and respiratory failure. So uh, decrease oxygen delivery to the pulmonary capillary bed and hypoxemia and CO2 will wash out because patient is hypoxemic. He'll try to breathe more faster to, uh, to get more and more oxygen. But in the bargain, the CO2 will be washed away and that will lead to increased minute ventilation. And these are the causes of type 1 respiratory failure. Yes, ARDS uh, is one of the causes of type 1 respiratory failure and one of the prominent causes of uh, uh, acute hypoxemic respiratory failure, which uh, needs uh, probably ventilator support. Pneumonia will also present with a acute type 1 respiratory failure, pulmonary hemorrhage, aspiration, pulmonary atelectasis, and even pneumothorax can present with type 1 acute respiratory failure. So this is the patient after diuretics, the lungs got getting cleared up 
but still there are uh, shadows on the opposite side and after diuretics you see the lung clearance okay and this is also one more cause i mean you see if there is significant fluid effusion unilateral uh, pulmonary edema can also uh, give rise to this picture of uh, uh, homogeneous opacity on one side so we need to find out the etiology for you know any type of respiratory failure whether it is type 1 or type 2 the clinical clues are very very much sufficient enough symptoms and signs are very important and we need to investigate these patients with x ray we need to do abg hypoxic picture on the abg and ultrasound chest can tell you whether the, this is um, uh, the the fluid whether there is a fluid or any pneumonia so you know uh, curly b lines will be identified on the ultrasound if there is presence of curly b lines it means there is pulmonary edema but there is no curly b lines but there is irregular there are irregular opacities on the chest uh, uh, ultrasound we consider it as a pneumonia and then we should also be able to uh, investigate with pulmonary function test if the patient is mildly symptomatic and other investigations like ct chest can also help you uh, to identify the underlying pathophysiology so uh, let's let's come back to the second case a 55 year old male uh, known copd presented with fever patient has productive cough patient is breathless he has audible wheeze and felt better in sitting position and with the nasal oxygen his chest x ray is done ph is 7.1 po2 is uh, 70 PCO2 is 64 and bicarb is 30. What is the diagnosis? Uh, and what could be the mechanism? Can somebody write in the chat box? Can somebody answer this? What so, could be the cause? So we have the second case here. The yeah. diagnosis is type 2 ventilatory failure. So uh, what is CO2, the mechanism? What is the mechanism? What is the mechanism? Case? It will be CO2 buildup. Dr. Indumati, due to pneumonia. Anything else, type 2 respiratory failure, anything else, pneumonia can also cause any other causes? Any more answers for this? So in type 2 respiratory question? failure, we will see peculiarly increase in the carbon dioxide levels. So, in which conditions do you see uh, rise in PCO2 levels? In any, uh, Dr. Pavan uh, has written. Uh, can you just elaborate what you have written, doctor? And this is the reduced ventilation due to muscle fatigue, doctor. Uh, that's that's right. That's absolutely right. On the basis of this X-ray finding, can somebody tell me what could be the uh, cause of this type of respiratory failure on the basis Expiratory of respiratory flow limitation dr pavan has written and dr yes. prince has written left ventricular failure so left ventricular failure will not lead to type 2 respiratory failure type no. 1 respiratory failure will be seen with pulmonary edema left ventricular failure hypoxemia pulmonary edema type 2 respiratory and failure is basically seen with as uh, Pavan has said rightly, abnormality in the respiratory mechanics, neuromuscular skeletal abnormalities, pulmonary abnormalities, patients with the COPD, okay, interstitial lung disease can present with uh, a rise in CO2 levels, or patients with the neuromuscular disorders like Duchenne syndrome, Ehlers Danlos syndrome, or muscular uh, critical illness myopathy. Uh, these patients can have type 2 respiratory failure. Or patients who are, uh, you know, post-operative uh, in the ICU and they have received muscle relaxant and there is incomplete reversal of these muscle relaxants post-operatively can also lead to uh, a respiratory weakness and can uh, cause type 2 respiratory failure. Drug overdose, sedative overdose like opioids or benzodiazepines can also uh, cause a CNS depression and can lead to CO2 retention. Patients with the head injury, traumatic brain injury, raised intracranial pressure, these patients will be unconscious and they will, uh, they will breathe inadequately and can cause uh, CO2 retention. Patients with the spinal cord disorders, radiculopathies, peripheral neuropathies, neuromuscular disorders, musculoskeletal chest abnormalities and restrictive and obstructive lung disorders can lead to type 2 respiratory failure. So that's why the clue here is to find out the etiology 
we need to assess the severity of the type 2 respiratory failure and we need to investigate let's go back to, let's go to case 3 this is 55 year old male uh, who underwent lower esophageal tumor excision by left thoracoabdominal incision under ga and epidural anesthesia patient was extubated and was being observed in the icu after 36 hours he started getting breathless and his chest x ray is done ph is 7.19 pco po2 is 60 and pco2 is 55 and bicarb is 80, 18 so what could be the diagnosis can so with the second case, third case what will be the diagnosis of the particular case here post op atelectasis okay somebody has uh, answered uh, atelectasis yes okay that is also right absolutely right dr indumati has given this answer oh wow, great great fantastic and this is the x ray of the patient so what abnormalities do do we find in this x ray can we answer is the uh, diagnosis for this x ray on the left side can we see something pneumothorax some yes patient has pneumothorax and he has an icd in c2 okay, okay. Any abnormality on this X-ray? Can somebody tension uh, pneumothorax? Yeah, this can be a tension pneumothorax also, but there is no shift of mediastinum on the opposite side, so this okay. can be a pneumothorax. Okay, okay. So, what is the finding in this X-ray? Can somebody answer, please? Upper lobe consolidation. Oh, great. So upper lobe consolidation pneumonia. Yeah. yeah. Right upper collapse and yeah. Dr. Pavan has given right upper lobe consolidation. Same. Okay. Much. Okay. So anything in this x-ray? What, what, what are we able to see in this x-ray? Anything particular you can see in this particular x-ray? Yeah. Can somebody answer? Right middle lobe cavity. Dr. Right. Harila. Yeah, this can be a right middle lobe cavity. And what about this? What, what finding do we identify? Any answers for this Any answer? particular X-ray? emphysema yeah there is crowding of waves and there is pleural effusion and the icds are there in c2 so uh, this patient was in type 3 respiratory failure this can be due to atelectasis we okay. have one more answer here unilateral pleural effusion unilateral pleural effusion so uh, type 3 respiratory failure is because of abnormal uh you know uh, respiratory mechanism like you know uh, the chest wall compliance is good but the abdominal muscles are uh, you know putting a lot of pressure inside the thoracic cavity especially patients who have undergone abdominal surgery esophageal surgeries will also in include abdominal uh, interventions uh, the gastric pull through surgeries Okay, the, when, when the patient has big incision on the abdomen and the patient is trying to breathe, uh, the abdominal muscles will not be able to coordinate with the thoracic muscles and there will be discordance between the abdominal uh, movement and the respiratory movement. And that can that dysentery can also lead to atelectasis. Especially when there is increased abdominal pressure that will cause compression effect on the basis of the lungs. And the basis of the lungs all will not be contributing in oxygenation and ventilation. And that will lead to lower zone atelectasis. And uh, due to atelectasis, the functional residual capacity, the amount of oxygen reserve in the lungs will also decrease and will lead to type 3 respiratory failure. So especially seen in patients with perioperative uh, atelectasis in, during the surgery or if the patient is in supine position, patient has large ascites, peritonitis, big abdominal incision and uh, you know fluid overload can also lead to type 3 respiratory failure anesthesia drugs can also 
cause uh, you know muscle weakness muscle muscle fatigue um, uh, and uh, residual muscle relaxant effect can also cause uh, uh, respiratory failure so we need to understand the uh, 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 pathophysiology and then we will be able to treat the cause so for that we need to diagnose on the basis of the clinical parameters some signs and symptoms and then we need to investigate them with abg x ray uh, probably and then probably the ct scan also may have to be done so the pathophysiology of type 4 respiratory failure is due to uh, uh, you know hypoperfusion of the organs okay so that can be due to cardiogenic causes or septicemic causes or hypovolemic causes okay so uh, this type 2 type 4 respiratory failure uh, uh, lead to uh, hypoperfusion of the organs especially when there is circulatory failure the cardiac output is low heart is like a pump and the lungs are like an oxygen tank okay if the oxygen tank is not filled properly adequately there will be hypoxemia and when the pump is failed like the heart is failed the overall oxygen delivery will be compromised because of the low cardiac output the it is like a pump which supplies uh, water in the society wherever we stay in our houses okay there is a pump in our society and then pump circulates uh, uh, water to all the households similarly when if that pump is not working efficiently we may not get adequate water supply similarly uh, in our body if the heart is not working which is a pump which is not working properly the oxygen delivery blood supply to the organs like liver kidney will be compromised and that will lead to hypoperfusion